Welcome back fellow learners. In this video, we will start module 2. Before that, if you have not watched the first module, watch it first for a better understanding. Now, let's discuss module 2, which is about OSHA 1926 Subpart C, General Safety and Health Provisions. This module provides an overview of OSHA 29 CFR 1926 Subpart C, General Safety and Health Provisions. This module will cover safety training and education, first aid, fire protection, and employee emergency action plans. The module is comprised of the following two lessons. First, general safety and health provisions. Second, employee medical and exposure records, means of egress, and employee emergency action plans. Let's memorize the essential key terms. ANSI, American National Standards Institute. Authorized person, this is an individual assigned by an employer to perform a certain duty or to be present at a particular job site. Competent person, this individual has the authorization to take corrective action and can recognize existing and predictable hazards. Qualified, an expert with recognized credentials, knowledge, training, and experience who can solve problems related to the subject matter, work, or project. Let's start with the first lesson, general safety and health provisions. The key points are to decrease the risk of accidents and injuries in the workplace, employers should provide frequent and regular inspections of the job site, materials, and equipment employees use. Using any machinery, tool, material, or equipment that does not comply with OSHA standards is prohibited. Unsafe machines, tools, materials, or equipment should be identified by tagging or locking the controls to render them inoperable or they should be physically removed from the place of operation. Under OSHA standards, employers are responsible for educating and training employees, recognizing and avoiding unsafe conditions in the workplace, and controlling and eliminating any hazards or exposures to illness or injury. In areas where harmful plants or animals are present on the job site, employees who might be exposed should be educated about the potential hazards, how to avoid injury, and the first aid procedures to be used in the event of injury. During construction, combustible scrap and debris shall be removed regularly, and safe means shall be provided to facilitate such removal. First aid supplies shall be easily accessible when required, the first aid kit's contents shall be placed in a weatherproof container, with individually sealed packages for each type of item, the employer shall check the contents before each job, and at least weekly during the job, to ensure that expended items are replaced. Employees required to enter confined or enclosed spaces should be instructed on the nature of the hazards involved, the necessary precautions to be taken, and the required use of protective and emergency equipment. Employers are responsible for ensuring fire protection and suppression equipment availability. Lastly, containers shall be provided for collecting and separating waste, trash, and other refuse and should be disposed of at frequent and regular intervals. Now look at the study questions. Moving on to the final lesson. Employee medical and exposure records, emergency action plans, and means of egress. The key points are Access to employee medical and exposure records must be provided in a reasonable manner and place. If access cannot be delivered within 15 days of the employee's request, the employer must state the reason for the delay and the earliest date the records will be available. Upon request, the employer must provide the employee or the employee's designated representative access to employee exposure records. If no records exist, the employer must provide records of other employees with job duties similar to those of the employee. Access to these records does not require the written consent of other employees. In addition, these records must reasonably indicate the identity, amount, and nature of the toxic substances or harmful physical agents to which the employee has been exposed. When appropriate, 
an employer representing physician can elect to disclose information on specific diagnoses of terminal illnesses or psychiatric conditions only to an employee's designated representative and not directly to the employee. Employees must be informed of the existence, location, and availability of their medical and exposure records at the time of initial employment and at least annually after that. The employer must also inform employees of their rights under the access standard and make copies available. Employees must also be told who is responsible for maintaining and providing access to records. When an employer ceases to do business, that employer must provide the successor employer with all employee medical and exposure records. When there is no successor to receive the records for the prescribed period, the employer must inform the current affected employees of their access rights at least three months before the cessation of business and must notify the director of the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health in writing at least three months before the disposal of records. The employer must establish in the emergency action plan the types of evacuation to be used in emergency circumstances. The employer should establish an employee alarm system, if the system is used to alert fire brigade members or for other purposes, a distinctive signal for each purpose shall be used. A visible sign shall mark exits, and means of egress shall be continually maintained, exits for buildings or structures shall be arranged and maintained, to provide free and unobstructed egress from all parts of the building or structure when the building is occupied. Lastly, the employer must review with each employee upon initial assignment those parts of the plan that the employee must know to protect themselves in an emergency. The written plan must be kept at the workplace and available for employee review. Now look at the study questions. If you have any questions, write them in the comment section. We will resume with Module 3 in the next video. Subscribe now and press the bell icon for updates. Until then, stay safe.